The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer and Cotegra Fungicides, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. All right, joining us on this episode of the Soybean School here on Real Agriculture, we're pleased to be joined by Jeanette Goche with BASF. And Jeanette, uh, last fall, this spring, it wasn't ideal for getting a, a crop in in terms of uh, how wet much of Western Canada, the soybean growing parts of Western Canada were. Uh, what are we seeing for weed issues so far in 2020 and, and what are some of the lessons that we've learned? Definitely, we recommend a two-pass system in soybeans. Uh, Rob Golden at the University of Manitoba has done some uh, work here in Manitoba showing that, you know, VE to V3 can be really important for that critical weed-free period in soybeans. Um, But once we start throwing in uh, other factors like row spacing, we might even be looking at keeping that that crop weed free until V4 or even a little bit after, especially on some of these wider rows here. Uh, so it is important then to start thinking of what are you going to put on pre or early and what are you going to follow that up with. Um, I think in soybeans here, um, we're just always getting more products too to work with, uh, more systems that we can work with. And so then I think choosing the right product Uh, for the weed spectrum on your farm becomes important. So this year, I think after uh, so many dry years, kochia still seems to be a key weed, uh, especially since we're looking at estimates of about 60% of that kochia population being resistant to glyphosate now, uh, according to the Manitoba Ag Survey that was recently completed. So making sure that we are throwing in uh, multiple modes of action to target uh, those weeds that we are really concerned about and kochia is a really great example. Um, So there are cases where, uh, you know, if you're looking at volunteer uh, canola being one of your driver weeds, you know, choosing something that's very strong on canola for your your second pass or even coming in with your your, uh, pre-emerge to target that. Uh, Whereas if you have kochia or lamb's quarters as a driver weed, you know, making sure that you are looking at your product options so that you are adequately controlling those weeds. And of course, we've had it for a few years already, but dicamba tolerance is kind of adds that option. Yeah, those extend beans uh, really do widen the options. I mean, we are finding water hemp in the province here now and assuming that we are getting some group nine and group two resistance uh, when we do get get those weed populations as well. Uh, the kochia that I already mentioned, but even things like lamb's quarters, which under these conditions, the, the, you know, the hot, cool conditions that we've had this spring can really be a challenging weed. And so uh, using extend beans with uh, a dicamba based product can really be a, a good fit for fields with those weed challenges. Of course, uh, we like to see the dicamba, you know, our own product in Genia, for example, we like to see it go on early. We feel like that's a good stewardship message and really a good fit for the weeds that we are targeting here in Manitoba. Um, We definitely have heard a lot about inversions. And so we do have a stewardship website, for example, with uh, Ingenia Spray Tool. So ingeniaspraytool.ca, for example, which growers can use to forecast inversions when they are planning to spray. Okay. That plant you have in your hands, I see a couple purple blooms on there. Why don't we talk about staging for, uh, not all the fields are that I've seen around are, are that far advanced. Why don't we talk about staging? No, it is good to go stage beans. So we are looking to, to get our weed control passes in, so our herbicide passes in uh, before we hit Uh, bloom stage or before we start turning into that reproductive. So soybeans can be a challenge in that sense and that often they are daylight driven. So we do have some advanced plants here, a good size plants and we are getting into our our stages here. Um, But even if you're on the western side of the province, you know a little bit later seeding dates on that side, it's good to be checking for blooms regardless of plant size, just knowing that that they might be on there. So definitely we want to avoid herbicide applications once we hit the R stages, just knowing that there can be some uh, mechanical injury uh, being off label and that you can really affect your your blooms that are on your plant. All right. Finally then, shifting gears a little bit then, Jeanette, we've had ample heat and uh, ample moisture or more than enough moisture in, in much of the soybean growing area here on the prairies. Is this the year when we should be looking at fungicides in soybeans? 
For sure, it's something to keep an eye on. And when you are in your fields doing your, your post in-crop herbicide scout or even after, uh, if we keep getting some of those timely rains, there's fungicide going on now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would keep an eye on it. I mean, generally we see in Manitoba that our disease pressure in, um, in soybeans can be quite low or sporadic. Uh, white mold can be a challenge. So in years where we do have moisture, uh, when we are in the, the reproductive stages here, it is good to check. Um, but also just noticing from the Manitoba Ag surveys year after year, we are seeing that some of the leaf diseases, uh, frog eye leaf spot, for example, are increasing. However, they do seem to they they do seem to be low still. So just checking out your own crop and making sure that uh, you aren't seeing any excessive uh, disease issues. And I guess there are other factors to consider too: row spacing, how you there's different things that contribute to disease of course absolutely so yeah definitely we do see uh, plant population it's some of those uh, the narrow row spacing or solid seeded beans that can definitely have moisture in the canopy but uh, even with the wider row beans good to check you never know just with the conditions we've had high humidity um, just checking within the row as well